fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World Wednesday. We're here in Liverpool, England, and today we're going to talk about are some of the differences that tourists will notice between the north of England and the south of England, okay? And the thing is, you'll hear about this kind of north-south divide in England and how people kind of perceive people from the south when you're from the north and how people from the south perceive people from the north, you know, and the same kind of thing. So, like, the northerners would say, oh, well, the southerners, they're, they're snobs, they're tech people, they're finance, they've got farms down there. And then the, the southerners will say, oh, the people in the north, oh, they're cheap and it's just industrial land and... You know, they have all these stereotypes with each other, you know, and, and it's kind of funny to see them kind of go back and forth. And, and you see this all over the, you know, in the U.S., there's the stereotypes of the north versus the south. In Germany, you've got northern Germany and Bavaria, and you, you see these things all around the world. And England is no different, but for a traveler, I think there's some differences that you might want to know about. And, and one, I would say, would be the accent. Because if you're used to watching BBC shows or, or the BAFTA awards or the Oscars when they win the awards, that English that you hear, that English accent, that's more of the, the South. So like the BBC is definitely more of a Southern English accent than is a Northern accent. Because the Northern accent, as a traveler, you're going to have to focus a little bit more when they're talking because it can be a little strong in certain places. And in some places, you know, if you're in York, you might notice that they, they don't say the the as much as you think they would. Or, or here when you're in Liverpool, you might notice that they sometimes they change the TH to a D sound, you know. But there's little things like that that you might notice in the accent. Whereas in the South, it's more of the BBC English, Queen's English kind of thing, right? And honestly, though, it's, it's not a huge difference, but it is something you will notice. And that's why when you watch shows, they make sure that they're like, oh, you're from the North. I can tell from the accent. You know, even in Doctor Who, they did that. Now, the accent's one thing you're going to notice. A second thing you're definitely going to notice when you come here are the prices. And I'll be honest with you, traveling in the north of England is significantly more affordable than traveling in the south of England. Because when people talk about going to the south of England, most of the time you're looking at going to London. Like, that's the big thing there. You might go down to Brighton or Bath, maybe Canterbury to see those things. And, and what you have to realize is in the south, it is more expensive accommodation, living down there, the, the rent, even the museums seem to be more expensive in the south than here in the north, you know? And if you come to the north, like I was over in York, I had a wonderful inn I stayed in for basically half the price of anything I could find in London that was actually halfway decent, right? So your money can go a lot farther. So if you're gonna come to England, you know, go to London for a bit and then come explore the north or, or get out of the south if you wanna save your budget a bit more and, and kind of travel up here, you know, get into places like you're going to, you know, coming here to Liverpool. There's all kinds of places you can go. Now, another thing you might notice when you travel around England is, is the Northerners tend to have more of a reputation for being more open and more um, kind of friendly to tourists and more friendly in general. Like, more of like that Texas, like they're going to talk to you on the subway, right? Or on the tube, like kind of thing. And, and you'll see that when you're here, whereas the South, the people are still very, they're friendly. It's not a big deal, but they kind of keep to themselves a little bit more. And I think that's why sometimes people from the North think they're more stombish because they're not talking, but it's just they're more reserved or they just don't talk to random people on the tube as much in London and in the South than they do here in the North. But honestly, as a traveler, one similarity, if you're in the North or the South of England, people will be helpful with you if you have questions, whether it's about the, the trains, it's in a museum, it's looking for a store or a restaurant or what to eat. People will be friendly no matter if it's north or south. And that's one of those things. There's not a ton of differences between the north and south. There's just these little things you might kind of notice when you're there. And I know there's one thing that I noticed the other night when I was in York, and that is their chips, the French fries, okay? When you come here in, you know, if you go to the south of England, you order some chips, they just give you chips, you know, french fries. And if you want some ketchup, you can put it on there. If you want mayo, you can put them on there. You can do whatever you want on there, but they give it to you kind of dry, right? Whereas if you're in the north, I've noticed that they, they tend to sometimes put coverings on their fries, you know, like maybe you have chips and gravy or chips and curry sauce on top. And, and I just noticed that the North likes to have a little bit more gravy, a little more sauce on their dishes than in the South. So just be aware of that. So if you're in the North and you're ordering fries, you're ordering dinner and they bring a, a thing of gravy with it, you're like, well, I didn't order a steak or mashed potatoes. What's going on? That's to dip your fries in or to pour over top, whatever you prefer. Now, another difference I think is important for travelers that you might not understand if you're not from here is there is a difference in how people perceive football or, or soccer from my American friends is that the thing is throughout England, everybody loves football, okay? It is the thing here on the weekends, people are watching when the national teams play, they're all cheering and then they're all gutted at the end of the tournament because they didn't win. But honestly, it's one of those things that really binds everyone together. They all love football. But the thing is, if you're in the south of England, people like football, they cheer for the team, and that's great. But if you're in the north of England, it's more like football is life. 
and it definitely has a lot more passion when you go to the games in the north versus the south, okay? So just be aware of that if you're looking to go to a game. You might notice it's a little more rambunctious here in the north at the games than if you're going to like a Chelsea or Arsenal game. Now, another thing I think is important is if we look at the weather, and you notice I have to I have to squint because the sun is so bright when I'm here, and that's just it. Like, the weather in England in general, it's not raining all the time. You have different weather patterns when you come through here. I mean, honestly, the last three times I came to England, I got sunburn in the summers, okay? It does happen, but I will say this. The north of England tends to have a little bit worse weather than the south of England in terms of rain and snow and overcast skies, so it's not a huge difference but it is a noticeable difference. And then I think it's important when we talk about the North versus the South, I think there is one thing that's important to mention that both the North and the South do agree on is that they don't agree on where the North begins, where the South begins, where the North stops, where the South stops. The one thing they do agree on that is that the Midlands is not the North and the Midlands is not the South. So they both like kind of don't want the Midlands with them. And so they do agree that neither want the Midlands to be associated with them, all right? So what are some differences that you've seen as a traveler coming here to England, the differences between the North and the South of England? And if you're from England, please let us know as travelers, what should we look for to see the difference between the North and the South? Because sometimes you don't notice much because like cities like Liverpool, they're gorgeous. And cities in the South you go to are gorgeous. And the people are friendly in the North and the South. And so it's one of those things that maybe we don't see, but let us know in the comments below so then we can all find out a little bit more about some of the differences and similarities of different parts of England. And I'll say bye from here in Liverpool.